dear students we can discuss the third part of current electricity in this section we can deal the kirchhoff's laws wheatstone bridge meter bridge and the potentiometer while accounting these sections we can wait minimum one question from this area are very very important based on our entrance exams so you should go through the kirchhoff's first law the current law or the junction rule and keep in mind the sigma i should equal to zero and keep in mind it is based on the conservation of uh, charge kirchhoff's second law or the voltage law or the loop rule and keep in mind here we can say the sigma potential or the sigma i into r should equal to zero and keep in mind it is based on the conservation of uh, energy while solving problems uh, these five sign conventions should be in our mind while we going from one end of the circuit to another if it is in the direction of the current we have to say minus i into r but opposite to the direction of current you have to take as a plus i into r while moving to us from the negative potential to the uh, negative potential to the positive potential you have to take as plus e but positive to negative you have to take as minus e so what or maybe that is defined the magnitude of potential from lower potential to higher potential you have to take it as the value of plus in a in every cases but if you just consider with the capacitor the same way the change in potential is traversing a capacitor from the negative terminal to the positive the plus q by z while in opposite direction minus q by z we can go with some problematic situations find to the potential at the point a so carefully look the cells here the resistance the potentials minus 50 and 5 volt the resistance to this is 20 volt this is 10 volt this is resistance this is 1 ohm and this minus 30 then based on at the point a we can apply the current rule at the point a the net value should equal to zero so how we can uh, write that one so we know that the say at the point a there is a potential of x the potential by the resistance so for the amp suppose if we just consider this one say this one as uh, the first case as uh, this one so this is the potential of so x minus so the current will flow like this one this is also plus so the in effect uh, they are moving like this one so um, we can say as x minus 20 Minus 10 by the resistance as 1 plus, and here in this case we can say x minus 15 uh, minus 20 by 2, and then in this case we can say this is minus 30, and this is x, uh, so, and with a 1 ohm, so we can say that x plus 30 by 1, and in this case. as x here the potential the minus 50 plus 5 so we get the value x plus 45 by 2 by solving you get the value so by using just using the uh, junction rule we get the answer next question you try to do more multiple choice questions based on the kirchhoff's law find the current in different branches of the electrical circuit so at the point b we can apply our uh, um, junction rule as i1 plus i2 is equal to i3 and then you have to apply the loop rule for a b e f into a so we are towards like this so minus 4 into i1 um, plus negative to positive as a plus 4 then Yes, minus two into I one, then plus two equal to zero, and similarly this law. Then solving you get the value. I one equal to one into A. I two take the value as eight by three A, and I three take the value minus five by three A. What is the meaning of this negative sign? 
So it is opposite to that assumed direction that is very important one. Look, in steady state, calculate the energy stored in the capacitor C0. In the steady state, in the sense the capacitor arm, there is no current flow through it. That is a very important concept. And by using the circuit element as said, then we can apply the junction rule at the point A and B. So at the point A, we get the value as uh, uh, 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 minus I, I1 equal to 0. So I1 equal to 3A. And similarly at the point V, we get the value I2. Then you can uh, just find A, D, C, B, A loop. We have to find what is the potential difference between V, A, B. So you just concept. You get the value as A, V, A, B equal to 20 volt. So we can easily find that energy is equal to half CV square and you get the value. A good question. See a special concept. The charging and discharging of a capacitor in connection with the resistance. That charging and discharging can be simply, um, we can explain based on this circuit. So while one in connection that is charging, at that case uh, that capacitor is under charging through a resistor R. But when we connect uh, that to, then the capacitor under discharge through this capital R. So what are the, uh, uh, after a time T, what is the charge during charging? So Q take the value as Q0 into 1 minus E raised to minus T by RC. And where Q0 is the maximum value of charge. That will happen when time time T equal to infinity. Look the variation of charge with respect to time. But at a particular time T equal to tau equal to the time constant RG. And we can say the 63 percentage of the charge is there at that time. But during discharging, at any time t, the charge we can find as q equal to q0 into e raised to minus t by rc. But at the time constant, the tau equal to t equal to rc. And keep in mind that the charge becomes q0 by e. That is just 37% of the charge is there at the time constant. And we can deal with one question, calculate the current in each branch R1, R2 in the circuit. So with respect to V, and we can just consider this equivalent to the summation of three circuits. And the reason, the potential is a constant for the three amps. So the first amp we can write like this one, good. The current, say, flowing is I1, so I1, R1 by V. And for the second one, as R2C, and third one, R3V. But in these two cases, uh, the normal circuits and hence we can uh, write the current through them are constant as I equal to V by R1, it is a constant and I3 take the value as V by R3. But this is a capacitor circuit, especially at the beginning and at the end thing. And there we can write easily as I to take the value as I0 in E raised to minus T by R2C. And keep in mind that I0 take the value as V by R2 and the tau the time constant becomes CRT. So the very important concept to keep in mind. The Western bridge. So look in the circuit. We can find any one of the unknown resistance based on this circuit. And you have to just uh, think about the balanced bridge and unbalanced bridge. Under balanced bridge, the current flow through the charge uh, galvanometer G becomes zero. The potential at the point B and D become equal. And therefore, by solving, we get the value as P by Q, take the value as R by S. And there is an examination concept is there. On mutually interchanging that G and the cell, there is no change happen to the balancing condition. If there is no current flow through the G value, then P and Q are in series, R and S are in series, but both of them are in parallel. And hence the effective resistance of the Wheatstone bridge can be simply find out as uh, P plus Q into R plus S by P plus Q plus R plus S. And keep in mind the current will flow from uh, 
d to b d to b if the potential at the point d should be greater than b that means v a minus v d should be less corresponding to v a minus v b we can find the value and this is a condition in order to flow the current from d to b if p s should be p s should be greater than r q p s should be greater than r q p s should be greater than r q it's a very important concept look the meter bits so we have to uh, use the wisdom bits principle so x by r is equal to the resistance corresponds to l length by 100 minus l so x by r equal to l by 100 minus l and here also if we just interchange that is l and the galvanometer there is no change happen to the balance position it is a very important concept look the potential meter a lot of applications are there at first one what is the principle behind that the potential is proportional to length the potential gradient is a constant so that is a concept look the basic circuit of a potential meter so ab is a potential meter wire the circuit elements in connection between a and b is treated as the primary circuit there a cell and a rheostat is there variable resistance so that will give the energy to work with the potential meter and the second one the circuit for the application the secondary network and here e and uh, a galvanometer are connected with the jockey the balance length on it is proportional to e and it is based on a null method and hence that circuits never take current from an external cell it uses its own cell because of the primary network and hence we can say the potential meter is said to be an ideal voltmeter and suppose we need to find the internal resistance of a cell then you have to connect that uh, cell in the circuit from the uh, a point this circuit with an external resistance r dash with the key at first um, in open we have to introduce that uh, capital e cell it's on so it will give the value of emr so e proportional to l1 but in the second case we have to insert the key and hence we have to measure the terminal potential difference that balance length is l2 so e proportional to l1 and v proportional to l2 then you can solve it and you get the very important concept the internal resistance of the cell is l1 minus l2 by l2 into r dash and you keep in mind the comparison of em of two cells it is a very important concept if we can change this happen to the secondary network we have to introduce that e1 and e2 then we can say as e1 by e2 to equal to l1 by l2 but in another problematic situation if both the cells are connected in series with a balance length l1 and if the polarity is interchanged then it is l2 then we can easily find e1 by e2 to take the value as l1 plus l2 by l1 minus l2 and see look the secondary circuit we can use the comparison of resistances so from a, a resistance r1 and resistance r2 so with the points x and y so that x and z so y is connected to x in the sense that uh, uh, z is not in the circuit so only r1 is in connection so there we can say that i into r1 proportional to l1 from the shell and the second case suppose it is connected to z that r1 and r2 are in series suppose the balance length is l2 then you can easily find the value for r2 by r1 equal to l2 minus l1 by l1 in a potential meter the very important term is the potential gradient and it is directly proportional to the resistance per length of the potential meter wire the radius of the potential meter wire the specific resistance of the material of the potential meter wire the current flowing through the potential meter wire you should know the sensitivity of a potential meter and that is proportional to 1 by the potential gradient 
if the potential gradient decreases can minimum in value we can say the sensitivity is maximum that to increase the sensitivity you must increase the length of the potentiometer wire or decrease the emf of the primary gel or increase the resistance in the primary these are the very important concepts in a relation with the sensitivity of the potentiometer we can go with some problematic situations so here a meter bit is a set up as shown in figure to determine an unknown resistance x using a standard 10 ohm resistor the galvanometer shows a null point by tapping the key at 52 cm the end corrections are 1 cm and 2 cm for the end a and b the determinant to the value of x so we can say for with respect to x there is an end correction of 1 and with respect to 10 we can say as 2 so with respect to this one the end correction uh, so we can say that x division by 10 is equal to l1 plus x l1 that is the balance length with respect to the end correction we can say l1 plus x uh, x1 plus uh, sorry by l2 plus x2 so we can just, just substitute and you get the answer so that end correction problem is a good question in a meter bridge experiment the resistance are connected as shown in the figure the balance length l1 is uh, 55 centimeter now an unknown resistance x is connected in series with the p so in addition to three another uh, 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 x is added the new balance length is found to be 75 so there is no change in value of q so in the first case we can say 3 by q equal to the balance length is 55 by 100 minus 55 become 45 and the second case we have to add another uh, x with 3 so 3 plus x by q equal to the balance length is 75 by 25 you can solve it and you get the answer a good question a potentiometer wire has a length of 4 meter and a resistance 8 ohm the resistance that must be connected in series with the wire and an accumulator of EMF of 2 volt so as to get a potential gradient 1 millivolt per centimeter on the wire the resistance of the wire is 8 ohm the potential gradient is equal to dv by dr so it is given as 1 millivolt by centimeter in, in terms of centimeter we can write 10 raised to minus 3 then for 400 centimeter we can uh, uh, find the potential gradient uh, potential distributed as uh, that uh, potential gradient into 400 you get the value as a 0.4 volt then the resistors are connected in series we can easily find as the potential is equal to i into r what is i that is the potential by r plus r s into r and you get the value the r is equal to 32 ohm we can move with the simple concepts again a potentiometer wire is 100 centimeter long and a constant potential difference is maintained across it. Two cells are connected in series first to support one another, then in opposite direction. So at first one E1 plus E2 and another one E1 minus E2. The balance lengths are 50 and uh, 10. The ratio of EMF is so, so you can just substitute as E1 plus E2 is equal to 50 or proportional to 50. That is a correct concept. E1 plus E2 that is a proportional to 50 and E1 minus E2 is a proportional to 10. So you just take the ratio and you get the value as a 3 by 2. A good question. The potentiometer measures the potential difference more accurately than a voltmeter because and keep in mind it is said to be an ideal voltmeter reason it based on the null method it does not take the current from the external circuit like the voltmeter takes so we can give the answer as one so students try to go with the video so carefully to get 
maximum support to the entrance examinations. So God bless you. Take care.